week three in your virtual art course, you are working in module five and learning about texture. Today, just for fun, you're gonna be doing leaf rubbings. Before we get started, I wanna show you the difference between real and implied texture. When you look at a real leaf, the top side of the leaf is dark green and the bottom side of the leaf is a lighter green. On the bottom side of the leaf, when you run your fingers over the leaf, you can feel the veins sticking up. They are actually sticking up off of the leaf and you can feel the real texture. This is considered real texture because you can feel the veins. When you look at a drawing of a leaf, when you run your hand across the paper, the paper is smooth. You cannot feel the veins, but you can see the veins. So this would be an example of implied texture. For this project, it's a good idea to put a scrap sheet of paper underneath your drawing because when you do the leaf rubbings, you might get some liquid from the leaf on your paper. So I'm gonna put a white piece of paper down as my scratch paper and another piece on top where I'm gonna do my leaf rubbings. I'm gonna place the leaf with the vein side up underneath my paper. Where the leaf is, I'm gonna hold it with my left hand. I'm gonna pick up a crayon with my right hand. For this project, old crayons that the paper has been peeled off of works the best. You can see I am holding the leaf with my left hand and I'm gonna press down hard with the crayon, turn sideways and rub over the leaf. You can see I am not doing this fast. If you try to do it too fast, the leaf will slide and your leaf will look blurry. So you want to do it slowly, but press down hard with the crayon. You can see I am not rubbing back and forth really fast. I'm doing it slow and hard. So I can get all of the veins showing through the paper. A leaf that's just one color looks fine, but it's kind of plain. So a lot of times I like to do leaves the way they really look. And right now some of the leaves in my yard are starting to change colors. You can see this leaf has a lot of red on it. So I'm gonna go back with my red or burgundy crayon and I'm not gonna go over the whole leaf. I'm maybe just gonna rub over the tips of the leaf or the edges, not necessarily the whole leaf. So I'm gonna be very deliberate about where I'm putting the red or burgundy. Then when I'm done, I would remove that leaf and choose another leaf. And I'm gonna decide where on my paper I want to place this leaf. And I'm gonna put the vein side sticking up under my paper. And I'm gonna to switch to a different color once again, I am holding the leaf with my left hand. With my right hand, I'm holding the crayon turned sideways. I'm pressing down hard. And pressing over the leaf slowly so the leaf does not slide or move. Then I might go back with another color and maybe just do parts of the leaf or the edge. I still have plenty of room on my paper, maybe enough room for three or four or five more leaves. Once again, I wanna do the vein side up under my paper. And I'm going to hold the leaf with my left hand while I rub over the leaf with the crayon in my right hand. A lot of times I start in the middle of the leaf and then 
rub the crayon out to the edge of the leaf. That's another way to keep the leaf from sliding. Once you have filled up your paper with leaves, and depending on the size of the leaf you use, if you're using smaller leaves, it would take more leaves to fill up your paper. But if you're using really large leaves, it will not take as many to fill up your paper. Once your paper is filled up, you have a couple of options. You can leave it the way it is, or you could go back and color the background with crayons or markers. That would be the white area around the leaves. You can color that in. Or if you have watercolor paint and would like to experiment with your watercolors, watercolors work really well with crayon. The way you would do this is you dip your water in the paintbrush to get your brush wet. The watercolor paint is dry. You have to add water to it to get it wet. So I'm going to wet my brush and I'm going to go in circles in my paint to get my paint wet and creamy and ready to use. You don't ever try to scoop out the paint. You just go in circles on the top of the paint. Watercolor paint should be very thin. You should be able to see the crayon through the paint. The paint should be very watery and should go on very smoothly. See how wet my watercolor paint is? It blends together. I'm painting right over top of the crayon and you can see the crayon through the paint. If your paint is too thick, just add water to it to thin it out. But once again, the watercolor paint should go on your paper very smoothly. If it's too thick or too dry, you just add water to it 